All right. Good morning, afternoon and evening, depending on where you are coming to us from. Um, welcome to the first of four installments of the 2023-2024 series of Archival Landscape Seminars. We are recording the session, so please mute your microphones and close video transmission to free up our bandwidth, if you will. But feel free also to write any questions in the chat box and we will address them in the order they are received and as time allows. Today's recorded installment will be accessible via SAA's YouTube channel and its IAAS Archival Landscapes playlist. And I will put that link in the chat right now. Um, just to let everyone know, uh, I am Karen Trivett. I am the head of Special Collections and College Archives in the State University of New York's Fashion Institute of Technology here in New York City. Um, I'm also a professor here at the college. Um, but as your host today, I am here as the junior chair, co-chair rather, of the Society of American Archivists International Archival Affairs Section Steering Committee. Joining me today is also the IAAS Steering Committee member, Jennifer Donchev, who will monitor our chat for any comments or questions. And now just to introduce the series to you, Archival Landscapes is a virtual seminar series of the International Archival Affairs section of SAA. In each seminar, an international guest speaker introduces participants to the issues and advancements in their local context, describing the history, operating environment, and unique aspects of archival practice in their country. Today, our focus is on Europe, and we welcome from Croatia, Dr. Vladka Lemek. She has worked in the Croatian State Archives in Zagreb since 1998. She first held the position of head, Department for Information and Communication and Registry, Development and Documentation Service, and has since served as assistant director and now as director. She was a member of the Cultural Applications Local Institutions Mediating Electronic Resource Access Support Group, or CALIMRA, for Croatia and is one of uh, Digital Preservation Europe's project coordinators for Croatia. Our next series installment will be held during the week of January 15th, 2024, when we will feature South American practice, specifically Brazil. So look for more details very soon on that program. Now, without further delay, I am truly honored to introduce to you our special guest, Dr. Vladka Lemek. Hello, Dr. Lemek. Hello to all of you, and thank you very much for inviting me. I really feel quite privileged to be with you. Hopefully, I can share something from Croatian practice, but as well from European practices. To be honest, in last decade, I work much more internationally than just uh, in Croatian framework. But okay, to add first uh, something more about me, uh, as Karen said, I worked for 20 years in Croatian National Archives. Uh, I was also National Archivist, Director of Archives, and then I left a few years ago to University of Zagreb, and now I'm as head as University Archives. Actually, I'm quite, uh, I'm quite jealous to your situation because we are building these archives from the scratch. Since in our landscape, it is only public archives that actually exist, uh, network of state archives, while all other types of archives are just in the beginnings. And I teach for more than 20 years also at the University of Zagreb Faculty of Philosophy, where there is a archival science program from the late 80s, which is quite unique in our region because except Slovenia, we are the only one with actual uh, program for training archivists. And I was student of archivistics. I graduated there. I had a master. I have a doctoral degree there. And I, I worked as archivist, which is we just commented before this beginning, which is actually quite unusual. And my situation is quite unusual because in Croatia, although we have archival program that we are very proud of, 
Actually, uh, state archives doesn't like too much to hire archivists. They preferred historians over archivists because this is like our tradition. <laughs> so this is one quite interesting situation. So uh, maybe uh, huh, before had, before say something about Croatian archival landscape. I will say that uh, I'm involved in few pan-European organizations. Inside ICA, I'm the executive uh, member in, uh, in uh, executive Eurbica board. This is like European branch of ICA, but also in Europe, we have many pan-European archival organizations in various frameworks. Inside the European Union, we have official uh, archival group and official archival bodies. And we also have one pan-European organization that is called ICARUS, International Center for Archival Research, which is like the biggest uh, in last decade uh, pan-European archival, but not just archival. This is one interdisciplinary organization with quite interdisciplinary approach, which was maybe normal from today points of view, but when we start 15 years ago, it was quite revolutionary idea in Europe to go outside your like professional community association and to start uh, to build like some interdisciplinary organizations. Uh, today, it is, it is quite normal in Europe because uh, official uh, European documents and politics push us in this direction to build on interdisciplinary cooperation and interdisciplinary program, which I can share some lights inside. And inside Icarus, I run various uh, projects in one of, the, one of the issues, how archival cooperation and archival uh, landscape it, it built in Europe is quite a lot through various pan-European projects. Uh, not uh, archival projects for archival community, but also uh, in Europe, uh, archives are put in cultural heritage sector. So we have to be aware of this uh, bigger picture that we are put in the cultural heritage sector. And we have lots of, uh, lots of uh, activities which, which push us toward the cooperation in, in glam sector and also with Creative Europe, especially with, with Creative Industry, which is now quite fashionable. Latest, uh, latest document, latest programming documents in the Euro European Union gives archive in the position uh, to, to specially build cooperation with education and scientific sector. So this is like a newest initiative, what to do and how to push forward. So maybe first of all, something about so Croatian archival landscape. We have a very long tradition from Middle Ages. The oldest documents in European Europe, in, in Croatia are from fifth century, believe it or not. In uh, in uh, with this is preserved in some church archives, and although we have very long tradition of uh, preservation of document, we have very short tradition of archival service, since our special history that uh, in the during during our history we were part of bigger empires of bigger political association. So actually the. The Croatia, uh, the Croatia is independent since 1990, so 30 years, not so far away. So actually, modern archivistic is built uh, in 20th century, modern archival reg regulation and uh, modern principles. And we have the network, we have archival law. The new law is uh, the new law is from uh, 2018. And this was quite uh, this was quite a change uh, in uh, comparing to previous uh, regulations since it, in, it introduced digital perspective in this uh, law, and we have something 
called digital tra uh, digital transition that we are now obliged to to work out and this uh, network of creation archival uh, public archival service is consists of national archives which is founded in 1643 and 18 regional state archives. Yes, I was director, so I know <laughs> this is what I can <laughs> that I can share all the details with all of you. And 18 state archives. And now in this network, we now it is currently preserved around 150 kilometers of archival material in this network. So I don't know from your perspective, is it much or less, but this is how our landscape is now built. It's much. <laughs> I see a bigger archive, so I don't know, country, but hopefully this is this is something. Very impressive. I think that somebody posed some question. That yes, I... there is a question. Can you see it or would you like me to read it to you? Yes, please, if you can read it, I, I see Okay. It. This comes from Regine. And uh, they ask, how much of a role does ICA play for the standards used or policy set in the archives profession in Croatia? What other international influences play into those decisions for you? Actually, in Croatia, quite a lot, because in our uh, regulation is built that description of materials is done according to ICA standards. Plus, they say, uh, in, this is in our regulation, that we have to implement archival standards, so it's a G, it's a CPF, plus national regulations. But since we don't have national regulations, so basically it means ICA standards. Uh, all the ICA standards are translated in Croatian languages. Actually, it was done while I was in the archive, so I work on these uh, translations. And uh, uh, actually, all our finding aids and all our work is based on, on uh, implementing ICA standards. Also, new model, we have the first, uh, the first uh, uh, effort to, to build some uh, information system was introduced in the beginning of the century. And the first uh, system that, that was launched in 2006, it was called ARPINET. It was like national archival system. It was completely built on uh, ICA standards and uh, EAD also as well. And now we are just now in the introducing new standards. It is work uh, this year and hopefully it will be introduced next year. Because for the last two years, uh, we had the project in Croatia called the Culture. It is uh, the national system which was led by Ministry of Culture, archival services in the sector of Ministry of Culture in Croatia. And uh, it is based practically on the, on the perspective that majority of European countries now have, and this is to build national aggregator for Europeana. So it is not just portal for archives, uh, these cultural portals, but it is platform for libraries, museum, archival material, documentation centers, and all the cultural heritage sector. So as I told you, this is the trend in Europe to build like this pan, uh, pan, uh, uh, cultural platforms to like uh, put on the one place uh, all cultural heritage materials. It is not new in Europe. It was introduced. Uh, uh, it was introduced in the 80s by Gallica, for example, in France. Then Netherlands built like national cultural portal. In the last year, the best practice, one of the best portal currently running is Hungary Tana. Uh, this is a Hungarian portal. And now we also built in Croatia a portal of the same kind. It is called the culture. And it will be also national aggregator for Europeana. So this is the idea. And national archival information system is also now built in this framework of this new portal. So hopefully, I, I encourage you all to see it next year to see how it will look like. Uh, so I don't know. Is it um, is it this for the introduction about uh, 
uh, archival landscape in Europe, active or not. Actually, maybe which is uh, which is curiosity for a Croatian archival practice. I know when I speak with colleagues from other countries, actually, believe it or not, we changed five states in 20th century. So you mean, you know, fifth different state, fifth regulation, fifth political uh, arrangements from communist regime to capitalist regime to <laughs> any other system. So you can imagine for running public archival service or for running public archives, this can be quite challenging situation because every period has its own documents from every period has its own regulation. We have the language issue, also some materials is various languages. We have many open situation regarding restitution and succession of archival material in this part of Europe. We, for example, have in Croatia open issues with uh, Austria, we didn't sign the treatment after the First World War, so this is 100 years now regarding uh, succession of archival material. For example, we finished the uh, succession with Hungary in 1956. We have open issues with Italy and from uh, Yugoslavia, from 19. So this is a huge uh, issue of uh, succession and restitution of archival material of former Yugoslavia. So you can imagine that we have many open archival issues regarding not just uh, processing material, but also access or open uh, accessibility to this material, especially those which uh, refers to some uh, police material, uh, personal uh, documents and issues like this, especially when you go to the era of communist regime and all the materials which was uh, which was uh, made that so many challenges for archives here uh, we try to do it by regulation by not just but archival law but also with regulation concerning we have uh, we have lower regulations that are dealing with the use of material uh regulations for creators of archival records so in our system all the public creators are ob obliged to give their materials to public archives by territorially or uh, content principle and we try to collect and preserve as many material as it possible although like all the like not all, but like majority archival services in Europe, we have lack of uh, storage spaces. We have lack of special. <laughs> we have lack of financial resources all the time. We have uh, lack of professional uh, workers because, uh, as I told you, majority of people working in archives and in archival service are not trained archivists. So according to our regulation, even now current regulation, uh, everybody who have degree in humanities can be employed in archives. And then you have to take a state exam after one year, and then you are archivist. You are officially then archivist. So this is maybe, this is maybe quite different from many other countries, but in our region, this is like practice. I don't know if, if you I have a question actually. Um, sort of going back to the one that was posed in the chat, I had to just step away briefly. Did you talk about records in context? Um, the relatively new ICA standard, have you adopted it's that? Not introduced yet in our practice. Mm -hmm. uh, we are currently on, on this current basis. But we have an uh, interesting project in last six years in Croatia, which was run by society, by library association, archival association, and museum association. It was like national rules for description of uh, cultural materials. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was like some work on national rules that will apply to all GLAM institution and it will incorporate all uh, uh, all standards from all three uh, sectors and basically uh, RIC was RIC was implemented in this 
in these cataloging rules. This is available online, only in Croatian, but uh, this uh, system and these cataloging rules are published uh, at the site of National Library. So I can share with those who are interesting. And now it's quite debate. So it was six year project that was ended last year when, the, when these rules are published. And now we are just trying to introduce it into practice or to work on implementation of these rules because it actually demand uh, that everybody, every community agree to implement it in the practice. So not just right. the, the rule of the paper, but to be implemented in the practice. So this is maybe mm -hmm. something that was quite interesting mm -hmm. that we can uh, work on. Another question I have uh, while it's on my brain. Um, so in a public or governmental archives uh, repository, do you also take in private collections? Yes, since, uh, since our specific situation, and this is actually tradition in this uh, southeast mm -hmm. part of the Europe, so one of the issues we have, and I think it's quite opposite to, to Western practices, basically we just have public archives and no other types of archives. So everything goes to this public archives network. It is not, not just uh, public administration, but also personal papers, associations, uh, uh, court document, uh, maybe religious records, education, religious records, various collections. Uh, so everything that can be in this category, special the archives or, or special collections, it actually we just gather all in public archives because there was actually no other infrastructure to build it in. We have uh, church archives, of course, since Catholic Church has a quite long tradition and actually they keep the most valuable and the most uh, and the oldest record and and they have and they have public administration uh, authorities in middle ages so this is why they they role is quite go beyond just church mm -hmm. records and this is the and they were also during the communist regime, this type of archives was also private archives. We have some special archives in some public institution, like for example, uh, we have Croatian television have its own institutional archives, so you can find this type of archives in huge enterprises like railway or post offices. And actually, for example, I can share the example of my university. We are, my university actually now celebrate 355 years this year. So we are quite old university and the biggest in South Europe and the biggest in Croatia. But actually, I am the first archivist that enter <laughs> in the archives. And, and in, uh, we have 34 faculties and academia. And actually around 30 kilometers of material, which nobody doesn't know what it is. And my <laughs> for three years to cope and to investigate what we actually have. Yes. Yeah. So this is this is uh, uh, this is how much all the material which is kept uh, outside the public archives network is unfortunately not processed, not documented are not seen as archival material. Also in many libraries, in many museums, in many academic institutions, you have huge collections of very interesting material and very specific material, but they don't have archivists. In best case, librarians work on this material. So this is the best case scenarios. Right. Imagine that all this material isn't archivally processed or described or, or publicly available. And actually, this is the quite issue how to find uh, this type of material is quite issue. Is there a demand for it, though? I mean, is it just a matter of time to get it in a state of readiness for consultation? It is actually, I think, uh, something is... Uh, actually lack of awareness of importance of this material mm. 
because in this various institution, although many academic institutions, they actually doesn't see it as an important issue to work on their institutional archives. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it is there is no archival tradition or archival practice that they, they employ archivists or information specialists to deal with this material because every institution is focused on their own sector or their own mm -hmm. work and they don't see paper as something important or like some heritage or some resource information resource or something like this so actually uh, I think it's quite challenging. I think it is quite the biggest uh, problem in, in Southeast Europe because uh, I really uh, go through all countries, uh, Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, Macedonia, Romania, Bulgaria, everything. So this is really quite issue that everything which is outside archives is completely undetected or, or uh, under any... <laughs> under any informational, you know, under any post. So how it mm -hmm. will be kept is basically quite a lot depends about voluntary activities or mm. institutional awareness or things like that, which is, which is really quite, quite uh, sad, but we try to work on this. For yeah. example, we have something that is built in Croatian practice. It is called the register, National Register of Archival Material. And uh, the first, uh, the first uh, uh, work in this kind was done in 1984, when all the former republics of, uh, of uh, Yugoslavia Archival Association actually built, built this type of binding gates to mm. have the list of all archival material in uh, all the archives and they try to include all the other institutions like church archives, libraries, uh, uh, institutes and things like that. And actually we are the only country that that were renewed this uh, register in 2006. It was done by former director. Actually, I published this work. It is like 2000 pages. Oh. of material with a list of 200 and something institution and list of archival records. Unfortunately, I think it's the last effort to do it in printed format and it will never <laughs> more be in printed format. Now it will be just uh, national information system. But it was quite ta a task to try to be mm. a national register of alcohol material. And this is really challenging. This is something that I now actually try to do at the level of university. Well, we actually have a couple of questions uh, posed. Would you like to hear them in order? Um, Shelley asks, would you say that regime change has made the Croatian people value their archives more compared to other countries? And does linguistic uh, threat make Croatian language materials more valuable? It's a great pair of questions. Yes, change of regime has a quite influence, but basically, the, I don't know how much is this to share information or not, <laughs> but actually the first time that, that our government become aware of archival material, when was the hug tribes, to be honest? Oh. Because uh, after the war in the 90s, uh, since it was international court in Hague, and they, they uh, researched for lots of materials, and actually, among others, they also work in Croatian state archives. So I think this, this issue was the first time that somebody on this government level became aware of the archives and why their importance. Mm -hmm. Other issues were also a question of succession and restitution of archival material because this is one archival issue is one or, or cultural heritage is one of the issue in this long long uh, processes which is unresolved till now. So this is also important. 
the other issue is, of course, uh, from political side, when you change the regime, you you can imagine that people are interesting for this is this was the this is something that we share with all former communist countries that uh, public is quite interesting for materials that was produced during this regime, especially this one, which was uh, which was closed, for example. Mm -hmm. People who, who work for the regime, political prisoners, minorities, and every other issues. And especially in the countries, to be honest, where there is no, um, where people who were active in former regime were also publicly active in new regime, to put it like this. So, mm -hmm. you know, this is uh, sensitive issues, this is personal data involved in all these issues. But since it is the same people who are still active in, in public life. So this is quite, quite um, many sensitive issues in, in, in this sense. And also data protection is here. Also, we are, since we are in European Union, we also have GDPR and all the other regulations. So this is quite issue. But in Croatia, to have you some glimpse how much this is important in Croatia when we changed the law in 2018. Actually, we have special article in Croatian archival law, which I think this is the world. This is the only one in the world that actually said that for all material made before 1990s, there are no any regulation for protecting personal data for people who work with the regime. So like uh, data uh, protection only is valid for people who were victims, but for people who were involved, there is no any uh, issues uh, to publish this material. And every archivist knows this is uh, impossible to implement this. Mm. Because when you see documents with million of names, you don't have any clue who was collaborator, who was victim, who was this, who was that. So there are uh, no any way to find out uh, who is who, who was who in, in this time, in this context. So actually, because of this, it is quite, quite challenging to mm -hmm. work in the archives. And this is, of course, very interesting for the public and this is a lot of this material is published in daily newspapers and issues like this so we are challenging i said mm -hmm. i have just mm -hmm. said we are challenging uh, yes out. and regarding languages uh because of our history so we have many materials in german we have many materials in latin because for example uh, Latin language was until 1849 the official language in Croatia. So all our documents uh, are in Latin from wow. this period. And there are not much people who know how to read Latin script or, <laughs> or translate it right now. So many on German, many on Italian, many, of course, during the Yugoslavia in Cyrillic script. Okay, mm. certain you can read, but uh, it is script. So we... We are challenging from various perspectives. Yes. You can say it. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, I, I completely believe you. <laughs> we have another question from Ellen. Can you share about community archives in the region and do you have a phrase for such? Unfortunately, no. So this is something that is quite actual right now. And even we, Karus Croatia, run through projects which are dealing with uh, community archives and even we have associated these projects that are from United States also like and Gilliland and, and mm. various colleagues from Ireland and, and UK. Uh, actually the the term that is used in Croatia is Arhivi Zajnice. Uh, but I think it is not quite in the same cultural uh, perspective that you use it. In Croatia, it is used like for associations, like mm. if some association on minority group or a, a local heritage group start such project. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we 
see from here as perspective, uh, like uh, that will be community archives. Actually, now is on going project that I will participate tomorrow in presentation, which is done by NGO sector. They have the two years project dedicated to community archives or actually to be to be more specific to the archives of non-government organizations. Mm. And they will introduce it. It is uh, it is financed by also European funds, and they will introduce the, this tomorrow. Actually, these findings, and they are sharing to. They want to open like independent archival institution that will uh, that will be collected uh, all materials or NGOs and non-governmental organization. Of course, the organization and financial is also issue here. <laughs> and they uh, want that uh, also that Croatian government or that public authorities finance this institution. But they uh, they are uh, pleading that, that for foundation of such institution, which will be devoted to collecting and preserving this uh, community type material for all independent organizations or, or other structures. They want to preserve it, but uh, they don't want to put it in public archives or, or any public institutions so to, to, to start to found such institution. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jennifer asks, what is the biggest impact joining uh, the European Union had on Croatian archives and the profession? Actually, we have to introduce many regulations. Uh, GDPR was quite challenging for us, for all the GLAM institution in Europe. It was quite challenging because it was quite uh, novelty comparing to previous uh, approaches to using material in glam sector also uh, we have to more be in the line with european union uh, uh, standards and protocol and strategic documents so this is these issues that i was telling you, telling you about the archives are put in cultural heritage sector that we, for example, uh, are participating actively in Europeana. So Europeana is pan-European portal introduced from actually like official portal of European Union for digital transition of cultural heritage sector. So this is like actual, this is like actual formulation. And uh, the idea was to be big virtual archive or not archive, uh, a uh, virtual platform for all archives, museum, libraries, uh, so for all cultural materials in Europe. And actually it's run uh, via three uh, type of aggregation, national aggregators, thematic aggregators, and domain aggregators. So Croatia, for example, participate, um, uh, share material archives also through national aggregation. This is the Sakti culture. But also, uh, this was one of the first uh, pan-European archival activities to start Archives Portal Europe. Archives Portal Europe is a thematic aggregator for Europeana for archives. So all archives in European Union, including uh, Croatian also, officially participate in, in uh, sending materials to archives Portal Europe actually it was uh, it was did while I was uh, director of National Archives or National Archivist so I was introducing this in Croatia so this is why I have more uh, knowledge in this and um, uh, and so we have to share material this and we have all also to participate and share all the other politics and uh, policies. For example, there are few regulation like for sharing uh, digital, uh, 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 for uh, uh, 
digitization of archival material for this and that. So this is the shared material and we work in this uh, sector. And uh, sharing material is something that is quite encouraged. And this is uh, like practically implemented through these various projects and finances by the various portals of the European Union. And Creative Europe is the framework where majority of uh, of uh, this type of activities are financed, uh, not just for archives, but also for all glam sector. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, what strikes me is all this digitization effort and energy and money and time, and you still seem to struggle with getting control of the physical records. Yes, this is actually quite one one of the quite challenging issues that we have in this pan-European picture. And that we, we, this, we face this all the time in all uh, European networks. We have quite imbalance comparing to Scandinavia and, and Western countries still South Europe. Uh, for example, uh, I can share you example from this year's now when we introduced new strategic plan for uh, Europeana and for uh, this seven year period, uh, this this European program, I'm also auditor for European projects. Uh, so th this is run in seven years period. And every seven period, you have to introduce a new scheme, new strategic goals, new framework that you want to do. For example, one of things that is introduced in this new session is uh, uh, to make uh, lower, oh, I don't know how to say it in English, you know, carbonite print to, to make it lower. And mm. half, of, half of archives in Europe doesn't even start to digitize. So we are on the zero. We don't have oh. to cover anything that we even <laughs> didn't start. They are, you know, they are talking about how to, how to make it easy and we even didn't start. So digital gap is something that, uh, that divide uh, mm. especially archive services mm. since in this uh, glam sector uh, you can say the libraries their uh, biggest community then it can mm. museum museums are most open to the public and most interesting and archives are you know in the end with mm -hmm. everything so so we really have challenges and especially in digital uh, in digital uh, environment it's seen even more and more and this is why for example one of the one of my uh, roles in all these uh, uh, projects and Europeana advisory board and many other is to try to encourage archives to participate more in these activities and to try to share and to implement more open tools resources uh, uh, knowledge, best practices. Uh, many of these pan-European projects is encouraging uh, uh, making of materials, tools that can be shared. Mm -hmm. From this perspective, that there are many of uh, institutions and communities in Europe that cannot uh, finance uh, implementation or, of uh, tools or, or work on this. So quite a lot of activities inside European Union is focused on sharing resources, mm -hmm. of knowledge, sharing best practice, making education, educational material and uh, teaching uh, practices from those who invent something or implement something to those who, who don't have resources for this. So this right. is this is majority of activities that I'm involved in and, and the Icarus community, especially in the last 10 years. Well, and then there's the whole sustainability issue. Of course, the sustainability in digital <laughs> in digital environment is, is, is quite, quite a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, I have some study last year for European Union in this, uh, since we closed one, uh, one financial period 2014 till 2020 and for example creative europe in this time it was i don't know uh, 60 million euros and i don't know how many projects and outreach or outcome when you see what is uh, uh, out uh, what is uh, outpacked of this 
uh, project was quite uh, slow, but we see there are currently, I, I did a study, I think 655 or something uh, organization in this cultural heritage sector. And when wow. everybody applied for something or did something or then on, so you see this is quite a fragmentation in this sector, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is struggling for the money. So cultural field is always struggling for the always. money. Always. With Here others. in the US as well. So uh, this is this is one of the big issues is this fragmentation of the sector. For example, now we we finished with uh, in Europe with the digital agenda 2020. This digital Ag agenda 2020 was focused on building infrastructures mm -hmm. in, in cultural sector as well. And now we are in this new project for this decade is uh, is named uh, Digital Europe. Mm -hmm. And like we are now finished with infrastructure, we have everything <laughs> focused on building digital competencies. Mm. But uh, but you see, uh, in this uh, uh, in these digital competencies, uh, Europe is shared on data spaces. We are now in the in the data spaces, and culture is one data space. Mm -hmm. 23 data spaces and imagine when you now comparing and every data space have to struggle for financing uh, infrastructure money everything and when you now compare culture with i don't know traffic or climate changes or education or health or something mm -hmm. you can imagine what is position of culture comparing to to struggle for the resources with other right. data spaces uh, so it's now two huge uh, financial programs for financing these uh, data spaces and cultural mm -hmm. data spaces. Europeana is uh, is uh, coordinator of one of these now in Europe. Yeah. So hopefully uh, that we we will encourage more archives to step in and, and to be. Uh, participate more with archives is really a struggle uh, to to enter this cultural heritage sector because especially public archives have a, a tight connection with administration with public mm -hmm. administration with with all the other issues that have to do and to find some money you or to to share the data or, or to transfer the data or to participate or to work on uh, 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 public public engagement or or uh, or uh, audience uh, to opening to 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 more public you have to be in this cultural right. uh, domain and to to uh, cooperate with this institution, so it is quite challenging to do all this in the same time. Why you didn't uh, resolve this uh, professional, uh, all the professional activities you have to do? Um, so we've we've entered. Uh, we're at eleven forty-seven, and um, I'm going to open the floor for anyone who wants to ask a question. We do have a couple in the chat. I'll go through those first. But if you want to ask a question, just raise your hand. Uh, and we'll get to you eventually. Um, the next question is from our colleague, Robert. And Robert, would you like to ask your question or shall I read it? You can read it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Robert asks, can you share with us what the status of digital, uh, sorry, digital cultural heritage is in Croatia? And is it officially introduced in the country's legislation? He continues, Finally, how are, how archives, um, for example, make decisions on what will be cultural heritage and especially digital cultural heritage or everything that we digitize in archives, should it be considered cultural heritage? No, we have, so this is actually in our legislation, this is two different things uh, regarding uh, who, what material have the status of cultural heritage. So this is separate law. This is law on uh, uh, preservation of cultural heritage and register for all material that is uh, that is uh, documented as, as cultural heritage. This register is run by Ministry of Culture. 
So for archival material, for museum material, for archaeological sites, for all type of cultural heritage, the register is run in Ministry of Culture. And you have to uh, apply to have such a status. So not, not every material in archives is considered to be cultural heritage. Uh, only the collections or fonts or material that is listed in this register of cultural heritage. Regarding digital cultural heritage, this new law from 2018 introduced uh, like big novelty, and this is called digital transformation. And actually, this is implementing this new law that uh, record creators have to digitize all materials they have and have to transfer it in digital forms to, to competent archive. And actually, it, it even goes in such form that basically archives are not oblig obligated to take material in... Uh, uh, conventional form, but only digital materials. But it's not uh, in implemented yet, so everybody <laughs> consider it in different way. Actually, although this is now uh, built in, in uh, national legislation, uh, currently there are no any uh, born digital material in Croatian archives yet. So we are in digital transformation process. And we work on this, what to say. <laughs> so I don't know <laughs> this that you were asking me for, but this is currently regarding digitize. On the other hand, this, uh, this new project that is implemented now by Ministry of Culture, this e-culture issue, this is like national platform for digitized materials. So they uh, force all the public cultural institution and they oblige them to put all digitized material in this national platform. And uh, even if you want to apply for some public uh, money, you have to put digitized material in the national platform. So this is basically the framework how this should run. Um, I was going to ask you a question. Much. If I... oh. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Robert, go ahead. I really thank, thank you very much, uh, Vladka. Uh, this is really, um, uh, I just want to be confirmed because sometimes I feel that there is some kind of discrepancy when, you know, uh, 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 because right for some uh, material stuff, uh, for material, cultural heritage, you need to have the permission. Uh, in the archives, uh, you know, uh, how the archivists, you know, uh, make decisions, you know, which collections are actually uh has such a value or a potential to be qualified as a as a uh, as a cultural heritage for instance so actually this is quite subjective issue so every archives uh they uh oh um sorry i i'm looking for english word uh so just... I... Yes, so archives uh, prepare this material and they uh, actually uh, suggest it to ministry. And there is like a national commission in the ministry. So if they decide this for this suggestion, this, this is considered to be cultural heritage. There are two categories of heritage, national, national heritage of special importance or just cultural heritage. So this category that is uh, of materials that is of special importance, uh, it isn't all. So this is something like uh, best of the best, in, uh, special of special. And actually, uh, when you apply for this, uh, this is uh, evaluated. So, for example, Croatian State Archives material, register books, materials of Croatian Parliament or from Dubrovnik Archive or, or this category of materials are of national importance, of like national heritage. Some other categories of materials, so there are of importance in, if they are transferred to archives, basically in our archive of law, all materials which is uh, of long term uh preservation is considered to be archival material so everything mm -hmm. this is worth of long-term preservation 
uh, we make the list. Uh, this is quite subjective, so I cannot mm -hmm. say that this, this, there are some objective way of how to make uh, adjustment. What is special, what is for long-term preservation, what is not for long-term preservation. Archival service runnings, they, uh, they give permission to records creator for such lists. So uh, we presume since professionals do it, that they are based on some professional principles, how they do it, uh, actually. Mm -hmm. We do have another question in the chat it's from Ella. How does archival work relate to human and civil rights, diversity and cultural competency in the region? Your work is fascinating, she says. Thank you for speaking with us today. Actually, we have few categories here. Uh, archival, since uh, archival service uh, uh, help uh, also private uh, creators like organization institutions, they can help them and work with them in preservation subtype of material. Now, we have some projects. Like, for example, Icarus Croatia is now running a project called Auto Markers and Traces of Migration, when the idea is to work with minority groups and to educate them to work or to preserve their material. Uh, transfer of knowledge is here. Resources for doing something more is quite uh, limited, how to say, and it's also quite... Uh, uh, different from region to region, region, community and community. For example, we have uh, very good experiences with some region when there are local minorities, like for example, there is Czech minority in in Bielovar, very uh, Bielovar uh, uh, regional archives work with them. There are many Italian materials in, in Istria and also state archives from Pazin work with their communities and, pre and uh, to preserve this material. And for some, as I told you, NGOs or some independent scenes, there are quite open issues. Uh, they can uh, cooperate with various cultural institutions if, this, if public institutions are willing to collect this type of material. So this is up to them to decide, do they have capacity or interest or something like this? We also have a huge, huge Creative Europe project that was run by Icarus. It's called Coop Community as Opportunity, which introduced Topotech as the uh, biggest community archives platform in Europe right now, which have 450 collections and million, million, half million and, and 500 uh, thousand records from 20 countries for this type of. Uh, community archives and minority archives. So there are uh, there are some steps in that direction. Uh, it really depends on, on uh, professionals and uh, uh, interest for this, but uh, archives will try to, to work with, with all the types of creators. Uh, of course, uh, regarding migrant situation right now, we have many uh, association try to collect this material, some from private sector, some from NGOs. Uh, there are some projects running by uh, Jesuit Service for South Southeast Europe. They are helping uh, migrants to preserve their material. We also have, for example, a project run by my colleagues in the Institute for Ethnology, also uh, work with migrants of keeping their records and working with them. So we have now academic institution uh, and uh, non-government sector to work with this type of material and try to introduce some steps, uh, educational program, concrete projects with them. We are not uh, comparing to, to Western experiences. We are in the beginnings, but we try to introduce also such issues here. Well, I cannot thank you enough, Dr. Lamek, for being with us today. That was one of the fastest hours of my life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but
Thank you so much. I want to thank my colleagues, uh, Jennifer Denchev, for helping today from the steering committee of IAAS, as well as Ellen Ingseth, who is the senior co-chair of our steering committee, who was with us today, and uh, certainly uh, Dr. Vladka Lemek uh, from Croatia. Thank you very much. Point. If somebody is interesting, I will try to prepare some uh, materials. There are not many literature about Croatian archives in English, very few, but I will try to send it to you. Thank but you. Also Thank for you. This, uh, materials in English in Europeana and especially in this uh, pan European project, since official language is English for the projects. So, majority right. of. Uh, <laughs> that are uh, on English language about various archives actually came from this project because we are obliged to prepare materials in English. Well, and to let everyone know, we're, we're trying to initiate um, a program within the, the section to gather resources uh, to suggest to anyone who has an interest that goes beyond a one hour conversation uh, with our fascinating guests. So thank you again very much, uh, Vladka. And to everyone, I've put in the chat again the link to our YouTube playlist. So I have been recording this. And if you came in a little late, you can go back and revisit anytime you want. So thank with you. that, I will say goodbye for now. Vladka, any, any, any closing words? Thank you all once again. <laughs> you are all very welcome to to cooperate with us. I will, for example, show you, we published, this is published by Icarus Croatia Magazine Archive, it's online. We just published in our, oh. on English material, documenting and archiving student life. This is also a result of the Pan-European project. So cool. Uh, we've platform about uh, preserving student documentation in Europe, which is a subject that is close. Likely, <laughs> and uh, actually, we have many material. We are really open for for all cooperation, and you are mm -hmm. really very well. welcome. So everyone should just stay tuned for more information. And with that, I will bid everyone farewell. Thank you for joining us, everyone. We had a very good showing. Uh, I think the highest number today was 27. So thank you all and have a wonderful rest of the day or evening, depending on where you are. <laughs> I will stop recording now. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye.